Good morning. I'm back from Trinidad and uh, my son Josiah and I, in case you didn't catch up with the news along the way, um, we spent Monday to Monday, or actually Tuesday to Monday in Trinidad. We spent one day, uh, 23 and a half hours in it, uh, waiting at the San Diego airport for things to thaw out in Houston so we could land a plane there. Not us, but the pilot, obviously. But um, anyway, we got to spend the uh, week there in Trinidad and uh, just a very encouraging trip and um, people, the, it's the English language that you can understand. They've got a pretty good Caribbean accent, but uh, we enjoyed fellowship, food, and um, people were teasing me. I even ate a meal off of a street truck and uh, um, someone said, you ate? You know, they said, you don't usually step out of the, the protected boundaries, but the pastor there in the area, he said I could eat anything off those trucks and drink the water, and so I did. But um, I don't even drink the water here at home, hardly sometimes, but not very often. But uh, bottled water is so easy, and, and uh, of course you grew up drinking water out of a hose. I don't know what modern, um, modern uh, developments have done to make our everything such a mess, but it's where we live, so I'm just going to live for God and love Him and, and drink some bottled water when I can. Of course, I think uh, Diet Dr. Pepper is safer to drink, but anyway, we... Uh, we had uh, lamb and shrimp gyros and filled with I don't know whatever else is on them and all kinds of food there, Caribbean style living. But um, it's, a, it's not a third world country at all and it's very plush, jungle-ish. And um, roads are really, they, they do a good job of having potholes. And somebody there asked me, they said, so what do you think the biggest difference is between America and here? And um, there's not a lot. Um, one of the biggest differences is they have no guardrails on the road. There's, there's a corner with a, with a, a, you know, a drop off of some kind. There's nothing going to stop you. You just stay on the road. If you're not smart enough to stay on the road, then end up in the ditch. But the roads are pretty rough, and um, there, it's a, it's a, it's just a neat place. And um, we had a chance to be with three different pastors, and these men are solid, fundamental, Bible believing separated, they're, they're soul-winning, King James Bible. I mean, these people, uh, I could join any of these three churches. There's just those three. There's Trinidad and then the smaller island, Tobago. And there are other churches, of course. But um, the, one, um, the one pastor, the oldest one there, 73 years old, he, Pastor Loveless, he said, he said, all of us pastors were reached by American missionaries. And he said, we know we need American missionaries here. And I was encouraged by that. Because I didn't know if they'd have an attitude, hey, we're doing fine, keep your missionaries. But he didn't have that attitude at all. And that was very encouraging. And so anyway, great trip with my son there. They're going to get a few more churches support um, to get their, their full support. And then there's a lot of paperwork. And if you think to pray, uh, we found out that in a lot of countries, the problem is paperwork, but especially in Trinidad, um, getting the paperwork, getting the, you can go for three months as a visitor as a tourist, easy. And then you leave and you come back and, and you can do that, but you can't do that permanently. And eventually that's not going to work. And, and I think the last pastor, American missionary that uh, was leaving was because of, they, they, of that. They, he'd, stayed, he'd stayed as much as he could and he could not get that long-term visa. And so if you think to pray, um, they've, got, so they've got some plans they're working on and um, but they 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 want to be there and the and the goal their goal would they're thinking they're going to work under one of these um, they call it a national pastor they live there it's their country because they know the culture and the backgrounds and the little idiosyncrasies of a people group and um, and we're, you know we're not going we don't send missionaries to make people Americans we send missionaries to make people godly and that they would have a Bible in their hand and love and serve God in their country. And, and sometimes we can get off on that. But uh, anyway, um, pray for not just our son, but for our missionaries. Uh, this is Missions Month. Think about these missionaries. Pray for them. Oh, they have needs. Uh, Nate Beal, one of our boys, born and raised here in our church, he and his wife Tara just got to Honduras and, uh, in the last couple of weeks. And uh, first thing, they had to go to the doctor with one of the kids. And, um, and you're in another country, in another culture, and anyway, that's enough said. But um, pray for our, our dear missionaries. I want to mention something today, and uh, I'll, I'll um, mention several things. I'm going to look at a verse in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, 
But I wanted to throw out just a, a thought. Some, oh, I don't know, years ago, um, I heard a statement, that this statement, hurting people hurt people. And it was almost with an air of excusing or explaining why someone would do something. And we are in a culture, it's, um, it's a dangerous culture because we're always trying to find out what, would, what makes people tick, what makes someone do this or be this, uh, be this way or act this way. We're always trying to, and I'm not saying it's wrong to try and, you know, if I've hurt my wife's feelings, let me find out and don't do it again. That makes sense. But, but you see the, the, uh, the classroom shrinks uh, the, the, uh, the people who are trying to do psychiatrists, uh, psychologists, whatever, um, if they're not godly, see the Bible says in Proverbs, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge and the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So without a fear of God, they haven't even begun to gain true knowledge or true wisdom. And so without true knowledge and true wisdom, how can they figure out the soul, the, the, the psyche, the psychology, psychologist is the study of the soul. And so how can you study a soul when you don't even know what a soul is or who made a soul or the book that teaches us about a soul? And um, so, um, you know, just think for a minute, if, um, if hurting people hurt people, how do we explain Jesus, the person who hurt more than any human being in the history of the world and yet loved and helped more than any human being in the history of the world? And just being hurt doesn't mean you have to hurt others. Now, I'm not saying people who hurt people have not been hurt because I don't know anybody who's not been hurt. And, and we've all been hurt to different degrees. But think about the Apostle Paul, all that he went through, shipwrecked this many times, beaten with rods, um, thrown in prison and hungry and, and, and thirst and famine and all these things he went through. And yet Paul loved people. He loved, he said, I wish that I could be accursed. I wish I could go to hell for my people, my brethren, according to the flesh, the Jews. And so Paul's hurting didn't stop him from loving people. And um, everyone, everyone, see, everyone has a choice to, to respond to their hurt. In 1 Corinthians chapter 10, it says this in verse 13, there hath no temptation taken you, no temptation. Whatever temptation you face, whatever trial you face, it's common to man. Other people have faced it. And he goes on to say that God will not, but God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you're able. So here's this temptation, this trial. It's, it may be something happened. Now you're tempted to vent or to vindicate yourself or to hurt another because, uh, you know, in, in a lot of times in marriage, you know, this per, my spouse is unfaithful to me, so I'm going to be unfaithful to them to hurt them. I don't have to respond that way. And uh, these trials and temptations, he, he goes on to say that God will, with that temptation, make a way to escape and a way that I can bear it. So whatever that hurt, whatever that suffering, whatever that trial, we could do right with it. We could because God is real and God is faithful. I'm not saying it's easy. Uh, I, I've not hurt like other people have hurt, and I'm not going to get arrogant. I'm just telling you what the Bible says. And either we throw the Bible out completely and live like a bunch of animals, whoever's got the biggest gun or the or the sneakiest mind or, or the most conniving way of robbing people from their bank accounts through your hacking into their accounts, whatever. You know, if that's what we want to live, we've wanted to live like very educated animals, go ahead. But if we're going to live like the Bible, uh, like the Bible says, then there, then there is a way to escape and there is a way to bear our burdens. And I know right now there are people listening to this who, who are thinking the things you've been through and you didn't go out and, and hurt other people. Over in 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 9, it says, The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptation. Now, there's a key. God knows how to deliver the godly out of temptation. And so if you reject God, you reject the Bible, you've got no interest in the things of God, you're probably not you because you're watching this, which would be not where most unsaved people are watching. But maybe you stumbled across this pot, this uh, uh, YouTube and or Rumble. Um, uh, I, like, I like Rumble better, but... Um, whatever it is you're watching this on. And we also have our podcast is just for audio and, and uh, written emails. We go out Monday through Friday. But, but however you're getting this, maybe if you're not saved, then why should God deliver you? Why should God give you? The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptation. Well, if you have no regard for God or God's word or God's house or God's people, God has let you go do your own thing. And I can just tell you this, I don't want to be left to do my own thing. I was thinking about 
one of our men, good, faithful man, Sunday school teacher, great guy, many, many, many years of, of military service. Um, and I'm going to say a dozen or more, probably more deployments. And we were talking one day, just talking about military and different things. And, and um, one day he said, you know, preacher, I don't buy this PTSD stuff. And I said, what? And he said, no. He said, I think those guys would have had PTSD if they didn't even join the military. He said, I think they had a problem with them. And military just gave it a vent. But had they not been in the military, it had come out somewhere else. Now, that was, I'm not saying that. I've never been in the military. I've never been involved in all that. So I'm not going there. But this is a veteran of decades of military service who's watched person after person and all these things. And he said, uh, he said we all go through things. And... Um, I just don't buy it. He said, I think they'd have, if they'd have been um, working a regular job at the grocery store, they'd have had emotional troubles. Now, that's him. I don't know. Uh, I also know how some of the, the hurt he faced in the military, but see, he was a godly man, a Bible-reading, church-going, God-fearing man, and a good man, good husband, good father, just a, just a great guy. Uh, they moved out of the area, and I, and I love the guy and his family. But um, see, Acts chapter... 14 verse 15 says this, Sirs, why do you these things? We also are men of like passions with you. Paul said, I'm no different. Don't, don't treat me special. I'm, I'm a sinner like you. I face the same troubles you do. And then James 5, 17 says that Elias, Elias or Elijah was a man subject to like passions. The Bible says often that's how we are. We're all going to face trouble. Job said man is born into trouble as the sparks fly upward. How about that? And man is few of days and full of troubles. And those are from Job, who really understood troubles and trials. Um, I remember um, in, uh, early in my ministry, my wife, I don't know if she said something, did something. I have no idea what the circumstances were. But I'll never forget this little tiny window, whatever it was. I didn't say anything. I didn't do anything. But inside, you know, you feel that, like it's building up to. And I, I had this emotion or this response that was ready to go. And, and it wasn't a good response. It wasn't hateful, ugly, but it was, it was an emotion like, okay, who cares? I don't know. It was just something. But I, and I don't even remember, remember my response, but I remember thinking, that reminds me of how my dad acted. Now, my natural father, he left. I'm going to say I was 10 when he left. I can't remember exactly, but, but it was him, um, not my stepdad who became you know, just the best of friends of me. But um, I remember thinking, that's how my dad would have acted. Now, that's, or that's how he did act. That's, that is that, now, genetics, maybe I saw him do things often enough. I had some, but I was already a pastor. But that, that emotional something inside was ready to go out, and I stopped. And I thought, I'm not going to live like that. That is not going to be me. And I determined that I, I wasn't going to have that thing. Now, we know we're all sinners and all that, but... Back to the, the, the thought of God knows how to deliver the godly out of temptation. You don't want to get where God backs off. So Hosea chapter 4, verse 17 says this, Ephraim is joined to idols, let him alone. Because this group of people had chosen this lifestyle, God said, okay, go. Do what you want. I'm not going to be involved. Now, could I tell you, you don't want God doing that to you. You don't want to go there. Over in the book of Matthew, chapter 15, verse 14, a more familiar phrase, Jesus said they are blind. He, he said, let them alone. They're blind leaders of the blind. Let them alone. There are people who philosophically or in their behavior act in a certain way, and God says, go ahead, I'll just leave you on your own. Uh, you, you want to live godless? I will let you live godless. And could I tell you, you don't want that. And I don't want it because we're going to face trials and we're going to face hardships and, and there's going to be battles. And what I want is I want God to strengthen me. I want God to guide me. I want God to encourage me. I want God to comfort me. I want God to be my strength, my shield, my refuge, my fortress, my hiding place. I want him to be my everything. And so do you. So you don't want to push the word of God away and you don't want to push godly behavior out of the way. Cry if you need to cry and grieve and ask God why Jesus on the cross said, why, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? But don't push him away. Uh, this this um, thing hurting people hurt people. No, bad people hurt people, not hurting people. 
And I'm not, I'm, again, I'm not arguing with it that, that uh, people who've hurt people have not hurt. I don't know anybody who's not hurt to some extent. But I've got this, um, I've got this book here. This is two volumes, Fight On. And Sam Gipp put this one together. Um, Mike Ray put another book similar together. And this is just filled with short stories. I've read some of them to you if you follow the morning moments much. But this is a book filled with people who have hurt, people who've suffered, people who've gone through things that no one should have to go through. And yet they came out the other side victorious. Now, could I tell you this? There is a God who will help us take Romans 8, 28, and put it to practice. All things work together for good to them that love God. Now, if you don't love God, that verse isn't for you. But if you love God, all things work together for good. I'm not saying I've not wept. I'm not saying I've not had a sick stomach, lost weight over trials and troubles. If I was a better Christian, I might not have, but I'm not that good a Christian. But I do know this. This book is right, and God is right. And God is faithful. He's, he invites us in 1 Peter 5, 7. He says, casting all your cares upon me, for I care for you. He says over in Psalm 37, 5, commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him. God says, come on, I'll help you through this. And you might say, well, why do I have, even have these troubles if God can help me? Maybe because we don't stay close to God without troubles. I don't know. That's probably the case in a lot of times in my life. Maybe the trials draw me near to him. But the idea that you have to hurt somebody because you've been hurt, no, no, no. Make me a blessing. Make me out on the highways and byways of life. Many are weary and sad. The song says, make me a blessing to someone today. There is a way that you can take your hurt and turn it into a help. There is a way you can take your sorrow and you can turn it into a comfort to another because this book and the God of this book, that's what they do. Ignore God, ignore his book. Who knows what kind of hurt you're going to face and what hurt you're going to get involved in. But I happen to believe there's a God in heaven who will use you even through your sorrows. In fact, you think of Joseph and Daniel and some of the great heroes in the Bible, they wouldn't be famous. They wouldn't have helped us had they not hurt. So let's take our hurt. That little, uh, that little story I heard somebody tell, make a crown out of your thorns. When they took those horrible thorns and pounded them into Jesus' head, his thorns became a crown. And that crown of royalty was given to him with the intent of shame and embarrassment and suffering. But for all these years, that crown of thorns has represented something very sacred, very wonderful. And uh, we can go on for God. You can make it with the help of God and his book. And uh, I'd encourage you, read your Bible, be in church, hang around the people of God. And when somebody acts like an idiot, just assume that's what people do. Hope you have a great day. Don't forget, Wednesday Bible study. 3.30, Wednesday Bible study in the evening, 7 o'clock tonight. Our Equipping the Saints is starting, and uh, that'll be in the Fosse Chapel. And so if you haven't been involved in our Equipping the Saints program, 12 weeks, 24 Bible doctrines. It is concentrated doctrinal instruction. Um, all of our people, before they teach a class, before they get any position of leadership in our church, they go through those uh, 12 weeks, 24 Bible doctrines. I think there's about 30 or 40 people signed up for it tonight. Hope you'll come be a part of it. God bless you. Thanks so much for your faithfulness.